IHS fans, today in Federal World Plays Championship, two youngest stars, Abdul Sattar and Alirza Virja, faced each other. If you don't know these guys, you are not a real chess fan because Abdul Sattar just won the World Rapid title and Alirza is the youngest, reaching 2800 in the history. These are two youngest uh, history makers. One is the youngest to winning the rapid title and the other is the youngest to reach highest level of ratings. And this game is amazing. It features one very deep move. I don't know how Aliris have found it in the Blitz game. It's very deep. Let me dive into that move. I don't discuss opening too much because First of all, I'm not a D4 player. Second, it's a Trampovsky opening, as you can see. And many of you may be already familiar with this structure. And many moves are natural and easy to guess. Now, okay, move order also doesn't matter too much in this opening because it's not so sharp. So we have a standard opening moves and and some development move exchanging bishop for a knight maybe it wasn't the best decision but i don't know what was uh, the best place for that bishop because later you will see the role of this bishop in the game castles goes back and the queen attacks the pawn defense and it's not just defending the pawn with queen c2 it also says that at some point i push c4 and then you will have a isolated pawn in the center or you will have a hanging knight of course up to set off doesn't blunder a knight so you will have a isolated pawn in the center and you will see that isolated pawn will be very bad if it appears and Abdul Satarov goes for opening the center I'm not sure if uh, uh, of course rook e8 has no purpose except pushing the pawn to e4 the e5 e4 and so on if it's possible at some point i don't know if that's the best decision so alirizo goes to make a, his own isolated pawn in the center notice that isolated pawn structure is very nice if you attack it's not nice if you defend it's nice when you have two bishops it's not nice when you have knights and you will see it in this position how it is bad okay uh abdul satarov continues the attack without noticing that yeah he will have isolated pawn at the end and that's not very nice when he doesn't have bishop here when he's not the one who is in attacking side there's a takes takes and takes and after some exchange we arrive to this position that uh, Abdul Sattar of plays with the isolated pawn. It seems that it's very easy to turn this pawn to uh, exchange this pawn with the e pawn, but Alirza shows resilient in this case and doesn't let him to do this so easily. Let's see how he managed to do that. Rook d pawn, no, rook behind it. As still, Abdul Sattar of wants to push the pawn. And Lirza says, no, don't push it. And I will double to prevent you from pushing. And the Sator says, never mind. I play knight f5, kicking your rook. And next move, I will push the pawn. So up to now, this is the critical moment. This is the moment that I want to discuss with you. Up to now, we know that, okay, the whole battle is to push that pawn and exchange it with the e pawn and equalize the game for up to set off otherwise this isolated pawn without bishop pair is very weak so if alirizo goes back up to set off can push and if alirizo goes to uh, stays in the fourth rank still up to set off can push so there is no way to stop the push uh, pawn push where do you put the rook this is very important and there is only one good square for rook. Naturally, you want to put it in the same d file. 
that's not hard to find but there are two options d2 and d3 where do you put it which square is the best for you and for your rook if you are white let's see what alireza does and then i show you why this is so good and so deep it is very deep actually unbelievably deep Alirza goes to d3 and the game quickly ends after Abdusatar pushes the pawn because first Alirza pins this knight, uh, attacks this knight. Why I say that it pins the knight? Because at some point maybe rook goes to the c8 and yeah, this knight there is pinned. And if the rook doesn't go to c8 or it doesn't move there, the knight is already under attack and is not in a good shape. So Abdul Satarov cannot capture the e-pawn at the moment because yeah, because what? Because the rook is pinned. Attacks the Queen of Alireza. Alireza makes almost perfect moves in this position. A seal cannot take the pawn because yeah, the queen is pinned. Uh the rook is pinned, sorry. And rook goes to c8 to get rid of fin. But here is the problem because at this moment, Alireza pushes to this knight, and after exchanging rook with the bishop and a few moves, Alireza managed to win this game and win the pawn, and Abdul Satar resigned quickly. Okay, uh, this wasn't the um, uh, main purpose of this. Um, video the main purpose is here this move this move this d3 move rook d3 is brilliant brilliant can you say why so we are in this position that the best move for white is to play rook d3 and as you can see if we play d3 is one plus mm, plus 1.5 if we play d2 it is 0 0.5 both of them are better for white better position for white but one of them is almost winning the other one is just better so what's the difference between the two let's see what happens if we play rook d2 abdul satarov immediately pushes the pawn notice that we cannot capture the pawn because we lose a piece here where the queen goes of course, we can capture this, but this is very insane because we lose a rook for a knight and what is only black who is under att attacking us. So, this is not a good way. Also, where do you put the queen? If you put the queen backward, then yeah, goodbye my bishop. And next move exchanges rooks and simplifies the game and black wins easily. So we cannot capture. We can do two things. Either like Alir is a plate in the game, play bishop in g4. Or push the pawn. If we push the pawn, then we release the tension. There is no attack running anymore. Okay. So let's suppose we go there. And attacking black knight. And let me show you with engine uh, and see engine suggestion best move here at this moment is a strange move of rook e8 let me activate engine evaluation because at this moment this is the crazy part that i'm talking about at this moment engine suggests to just take this um, dangerous knight and if you take after some exchanges uh, black at least equalizes if it is not winning so i don't want to go down to that direction i just want to show you why we cannot achieve our goal of winning this pawn is it uh, we have two attackers and we win the pawn right so alireza will face a big big problem in this case because after this check if we take it takes we go up queen with check coming in we have no choice but push the pawn to defend the check, but then black threatens mate. 
if we say that okay we don't want to get mated the knight joins the attack and it's horrible you can say deliver one check but then what then uh, you should go to defensive mode but it doesn't help you are in a white is in very 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 bad position it has no counter-attack should wait to be destroyed by black and okay and okay then you may ask what's the difference between d2 and d3 why the same sequence does not happen in d3 right this is the major difference in this case so let me show you what happens with playing d3 like alireza did in this case if abdusatarov goes to uh goes rook eight we capture the pawn and we are not minus six anymore because after mm, check takes takes going up and if uh, abdusatar of goes to check we play here you say that okay again same mating pattern but no uh, okay engine says first drop a check we drop a check but no, there is no mating pattern anymore because this bishop can defend the mate. And this is very deep. I'm wondering if Alirizo have seen this when he played d2 or just played uh, d3 even or just played d3 just because it's naturally better move. I have no idea how deep they can be in such a short period of time like in a blitz game. What do you think? Did he saw all this uh, sequence or he just played uh, rook d3 arbitrarily between d2 and d3 just chose d3 because it was looking nicer let me know your opinion in the comments see you next time bye